This little filtration unit has actually completely changed my opinion on how lubricants should work. Now, I'm not gonna speak directly about this filtration unit now. I'll do a separate video on that. Uh, but needless to say, it's changed my opinion on how long lubricants can last. So what's the next step when your mind is completely changed about the lubricants industry? You go all in and you formulate your own product, right? That's, that's the next logical step. Even if you're not an oil company and if you don't have any resources um, or kind of access to test rigs, formulating your own thing, that's, that's the logical next step. So it kind of begs the question, why on earth am I doing this? Like, why am I putting this product together? And frankly, that's a, that's a really good question. But to be honest, um, formulating as a job is actually pretty boring, right? It's a secret just between you and me. 95%, actually, let's say 99% of formulation work these days is uh, you need a gear oil, well, you call up Afton. Say, Afton, I need uh, a gear oil additive. Now tell me which base oils I need to use. And from within the base oil market, you go and source your base oils, you mix the two of them together. It's kind of like the Betty Crocker cake recipe, right? Like it's, it, it's all defined, it's all given to you. You just mix the ingredients and you have a product. And that, to be honest, is boring. And so all of the work that goes into maintaining these kind of brands is actually mostly in maintaining formulations, right? Making sure that they're up to date, making sure that you've got the correct OEM approvals that are going to fit the market. And that doesn't really hold a whole bunch of interest to me. Um, that's not to say it's not interesting. There are people that are interested in that, but I don't personally find that interesting. Um, I come from sort of like the backyard chemistry, right? So I used to make uh, things in my childhood, which I would say them on camera. That's probably getting, going to get me in trouble. Um, I used to make things, you know, with stuff that you could find uh, around the household or potentially nick from your chemistry lab and things like that. That's the kind of the, the tradition that I come from. And so I like being able to put stuff together just by myself. And so um, in that tradition, I would like to formulate my own product. But as I said before, most formulation is very boring. So realistically, the only chance that I'm gonna to have to do what the industry calls a component formulation, which is build it from the ground up, the only chance I'm gonna to get to do that is if I really just do it myself. Okay. So now, the logical thing is, if you're gonna do it yourself, what kind of product are you gonna make? Well, again, I don't wanna do something boring that already exists because there's already a blueprint for those. So I wanna try something different. So what does it mean a little bit different? As I said from the outset, I think we're reaching a tipping point with technology where lubricants can last forever. Now that's a little bit of a different spin on what we're currently seeing, which is a lot of discussion about a circular economy. So if you see SKF's Recond oil product, that is about taking oils, filtering all of the additives out, as well as the uh, contaminants out, as well as the oxidation byproducts out, you know, renewing the base oil, re-additizing, and then you've got a new product. That's a circular economy. Now that's kind of a on-site example of what we do with re-refined base oils, where again, we're taking used oils, we're taking all the bad stuff out, you put the good stuff back in and you have a circular economy product. I'm kind of talking a little bit more about something which is designed from the ground up to last forever. Now at the moment, that doesn't exist. If you think about how all oils are formulated right now, they are designed to fail. Now that's not a knock on the oil companies, I'm not saying it shouldn't be that way, that's just how it's always been up until this point, because we haven't had the technologies available. I genuinely think that that's starting to change, and I thought it was going to take a lot longer, I thought that was kind of five to ten years away, I think potentially it's happening now. Now, what does it mean, what kind of things do you have to rethink if you're going to make an oil that lasts forever? For starters, the, the biggest, uh, you know, boundary to the adoption of synthetics, for example, which last considerably longer than mineral oils, has always been, well, what if I just contaminate them, right? If I contaminate my product, then I don't see the benefit of long oil life. Now, we've got a couple of different ways that we can resolve contamination. Number one, through filtration. So can we remove the particulate? Can we remove the water? And can we remove the oxidation products? And I think that the filtration package I showed at the very beginning is capable of doing all three of those things really, really well. Now, there is one kind of contamination that you can't undo with filtration, and that's cross-product contamination. That's something that you can't undo. So here's my proposal. 
uh, a unified formulation from ISO 22 all the way up to the 1500, where we're using the same base oils and the same additives, which means that if you ever took one of the viscosity grades and you cross-contaminated it with something else, you would have no issue. All it would be a matter of doing is correcting the viscosity, right? Okay, now that's a stretch goal because obviously it means now you have to have a multi-purpose product that can function as a hydraulic oil, a compressor oil, a circulating oil, a gear oil, a turbine oil. Okay, so I'm kind of going for a holy grail, which is a multi-purpose product. All right, now that already, I'm kind of like, my ego is getting ahead of me. I probably already nerfed the project, but, but you know, it, it's fun to dream, right? Now, the other thing about what does it look like if we make a product last forever? It means that there's certain components that you can't use. So realistically, we're gonna to have to rely on the base oil to do a lot of the heavy lifting. So that probably pushes us towards synthetics, really, because uh, things like pore point depressants, VI improvers, a lot of these kind of like uh, polymer type additives. The problem with those is that they tend to shear down. And even with the whiz bang filtration systems that we got, you can't really remove just sheared down particles or sheared down molecules. They are going to stay in the formulation forever. So all of a sudden, all of those things kind of have to go fall by the wayside. That probably strips the additive package down to what, antioxidants, anti-wear, and a mild EP. Anything beyond that is gonna become really problematic um, in long-term use. So now we have to come up with a base oil and an additive combination, which is going to be extremely stable so that the filters don't have to work all that hard. The other thing I think is worth thinking about is what does the lubricant landscape look like if oils do last forever? Because now, what do people value? Do they value just an upfront, very, very low cost that they can then use forever? Or does cost become less of a concern and people are happy to pay more for a premium product that is gonna have like Ferrari-like performance over the long term? I would tend to lean to the latter because I think there's ways to manage the increase in price. So basically we can make the most expensive formulation possible, but because this product is gonna theoretically last forever, you could you know, maybe have a payment plan which would make the yearly cost of the product equivalent to, let's say, for example, a mineral. Now, I realize it is hugely arrogant for me to even propose doing something like this. I'm just some you know, hack in their basement. Um, and realistically, all people in the oil companies have probably thought along similar lines of, of doing a project like this, but it's not feasible because you're gonna have to break a lot of industry rules, right? Uh, I can already foresee that there are certain tests, for example, which I'm going to have to ignore the results for because I'm going to perform really poorly on, you know, for argument's sake, let's say four ball or RPVOT or, or something like that. We're going to make sacrifices at some stage. And so it's not feasible for some of the big oil companies to, to do that. But me, hey, I can do whatever I want. It's, uh, it's my own money and it's my own risk. Now, what's my end goal with all of this? Funnily enough, you know, I am not an oil company and I'm not in the business of being an oil company. So I don't actually know what I'm gonna do with this formulation once I, once I have it. Um, I have set up a company uh, a separate to my consulting business to kind of bring products to market, um, but I don't think I would ever get into the business of manufacturing. So I haven't really thought that far ahead as to what I would do with this product, but you know, it's, it's basically a, a fun exercise. When, when do you ever get a chance to do this kind of thing? You know, just swing for the fences and hope for the best.